Hey everyone, Jimothy Graham with rcgroups.com and today you're here for another very special RC Groups live hangout. As the live viewers come on the air, we will discuss what's about to go down here. But before we do, I will say hello to Maticus Gunnicus. What's happening, Matt? Not much. How you doing? I heard this episode is going to be a little bit heavy in the, uh, I don't know, plastic, melted plastic department or something like that. What are we going for here? Jason PLA Cole is here. What's going on, man? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> oh, baby. We're going to have some fun. Are we? All right, y'all. So here's the deal. Um, Jason Cole ruined us. Now, Matt Gunn started this. Uh, yeah, see, that's, this is the problem. Before you even go any further, <laughs> I'm cutting you off. I've been doing this for like over a year now, maybe longer. And I kept saying, this is awesome. We need to do this. Blah, blah, blah. All goes to the wayside. I've done reviews. I've done all this sort of stuff. Nobody cared what Matt had to say. Now you two get printers and it's printer galore. Everything's printer. We got printer podcasts and we got you know, stuff. I am the one you, you two should thank. I think <laughs> I like to, I like, to, I like to say that at least. We, we haven't yet said what this special podcast is about. This is 3d printing and how it relates to the hobby because i actually i say this a lot it seems like i'm on the phone with my mother yeah, yeah. and she says what does 3d printing have to do with your hobby and i said you know what i'm going to use that that's a great question so uh matt gunn as he stated uh invented 3d printing no matt yeah. gunn was the, the first guy to dive in but the reason matt gunn i never did it is because all i would hear about was how you had to build this and fix that and it didn't work and you had to tweak it and modify it blah 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 i'm like not me i'm not doing that i got a lot to do i got airplanes to build you know yeah yep. this guy jason cole gets an email gear best says would you like a 3d printer i send it to jason he goes hmm i'll take that one and they were like sure so then after Jason did the amazing review, which I think we should look at in this podcast, Jason, then they said, they said, uh, Jason said, you know what, man, you should get a 3d printer. And I believe you're the one who suggested the Creality uh, C10 yeah. behind me right here. That's right. I'm pointing to this, which it would be running, but I think in the podcast, I'm going to stand up since it's right here and I'm going to show you how to level your bed a quick and easy way. And then we're going to talk about that. So, right. um, I don't know. I think first we'll talk about 3d printing. What the heck is it? Is that a dog? That's my wife. Back there. It's Truman oh. or somebody back there. All I saw were okay. Let me <laughs> shut the door, um, to the shop. So, uh, 3d printing is you take, uh, and I have it right here. I ordered it on the internet. Anybody have a cable of PLA laying around? Um, in my room. Yeah, I got some. I got some ABS. You want to see it? Yeah. All right. What do you need? ABS. ABS. Yeah. ABS. Where'd, where'd Jimmy go? There he is. Jimmy Gray. This is one heck of a spool. This thing takes forever to go through. This is. I print the heck out of stuff, and this thing just lasts for and lasts. And so, when I got my CR10, which retails for three ninety nine, y'all, that is not expensive. This is a LA hat if I ever saw one. Um, it, it, came, it, came, it came with this little roll, right? And I was like, okay, uh, as you know, red, black, and white are my colors, so we have one color covered. So I jumped on the Amazon, mm -hmm. and at six sixteen dollars <laughs> roll, I I got a red roll and a black roll. The black. Oh, those are tiny rolls. What is that? Half a kilogram roll? Look at this. I got this for 16 bucks. There you go. That's the full kilogram roll. Holy. So I was like, what the what? But you guys say you go through this plastic pretty quick. You can. Depends on what you're printing. So there's different things you can print. You can print. There's a wood version of this. There's carbon fiber. I actually saw a test where a guy was making props for his boat. And the carbon fiber one was like the least strong of all the fibers. Brittle. Yeah, brittle. brittle. Yep. So you take this and then back here on my printer, can you see it? Uh, there is a little square box and in that is a brass nozzle and you can a hot end. a hot end. It is hot. I did touch it. Don't do it. And, uh, touch it. Th this PLA runs, would you look at that? Just look at it. This PLA runs into that hot end and you tell it how hot you want it to get. 
and you don't have to tell it. It could automatically do it. But um, so we're going to talk about that. And uh, this heats it up and then it melts it and it zips along a little plate and it goes zzz, 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 and uh, make stuff. So first, let's go straight there. I swear I'll stop talking in a minute. I think we should show off some things we've made. So, Jim, what the heck are you talking about? Why are you talking about 3D printers on an RC show? Oh, look what I made. That's right. That's for a strato surfer. So it has, yeah. it has a built-in uh, mount in here for my little camera. And then it also has a hole on the side for my uh, fat shark transmitter. And then Mac gun, I think you're going to be proud of me. I, and we can go look at this website. I found a website that allowed me to drag this in there. Hold on. Oh, wait, there it is. <laughs> Uh, I would put a hole in it because I didn't feel like there was enough exit for air to keep that. Uh, <clears throat> yep. Oh, thank you. And so I, I figured out how to. I'll check it out. Put in a circle. Oh, did My you? Wife just, dang it. On, we got, we got Jim on. You missed uh, it. Dang yeah. it. Uh, oh. There was a delivery by a beautiful lady. Woohoo. That's how Jason Cole lives. My wife just brought me a package. Nice. We'll get to so, that later. So then I, uh, I literally within minutes figured out how to knock a hole in the created design and print it. And so now I have this nice hard case or hard shell for the canopy. I'll show you a couple of more things I printed. So you designed that? No. Um, dang it. You got a thing of earth probably, right? Yeah. We're, I, 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 I want to talk about all this. I want to talk about where we're getting our files, what works best. I want to go thank the guy that made that canopy. We'll go look at his page and all the stuff he's made for strata surfers. Yeah. And, and, and then you, and then you'll understand what the addictive part is. So the yeah. next thing I made, which relates to my friends here are these, these are holders. Oh that, yeah. Remember I printed all those for you. Yeah. I got some well, other stuff I printed over here. These are at different angles, and I'll show you what they're for. I said that I had ordered this uh, 200 milliwatt micro camera, but the problem is that when you get this little baby, they make it to be as light as possible, so it's not in a case or anything. It's naked. I have not verified that this fits, by the way. I print. I usually have a uh, some half quarter millimeter issues that I always have to work out with them because of my nozzle size. Uh-huh. <laughs> Looks like you got the same thing. Yeah, no, no, I'll put it on back. Here we go. Hold on. I'm working on it. Maybe we'll come back to this after I get it in there. So anyway, so if it doesn't gonna... fit, if it doesn't fit, you need to change. You can change in the programming your not what your nozzle uh, diameter, two millimeters uh, down to 1.5, things like that. Even if you're running a two millimeter nozzle, you can change it to, to trick it to think it's a smaller one and it'll make the walls just a little bit smaller. Ah, gotcha. And that will uh, make the tolerances closer to what they actually should be. Because the problem is, is that you print this stuff and let's just say you want it to be 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters and it turns out being 50.5 millimeters because it's not as exact as one would think. So that, that, that happens a lot with the tiny whoop case I made right here. Um, when you, when you take it off in there, I had to sand some of the edges around here because it just wouldn't fit very well. And that's, that's the reason why. So that's a good reason. Now see, it fits very nicely in there. It's really tight. And, um, Works like a charm, but I did have to do a little bit of work with the, with with uh, with uh, some a sander to do it. So. so, Jason, why don't you take us to your review and let's go look at yeah. one. So, uh, here's questions I'm going to ask in the future. I have questions about bed temperature, nozzle temperature, bed mm -hmm. flatness. Uh, then I want to go look at Thingverse and and do some searches and show everyone that. And then I want to look at some online applications that allow you to create whatever the heck you want, which is the most exciting part. Of me. All right. Who's up? Yeah, there's a lot. There's so much to it in there. Jason's heading over to his review of, of uh, did you guys forget the review that I did? Uh, probably it was a long time ago. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. It was, uh, 
October of last year, one year ago, I did the CME CNC ERS right when it came out. So, but anyway, All right, so the, I'm going to open this up a little bit. This I'm going to let Jason talk, of course, but this is going to let you see exactly what we're talking about here. Yeah. So I did this as a kind of a newbie article to look at your, like what you might want to get as your first printer. And so this is the Anycubic i3 Mega. It's essentially like a, a, a i3 clone from Prusa. You might have heard the name Prusa is kind of well known. Joseph Prusa is well known uh, and a has famous. a line of printers. Right. Yeah. And so these, there's a lot of clones and copies of it. And this is kind of one of those, but it's a great one. It comes pre built. There's really like eight bolts that you have to put in to, to get it. It's like really nothing. And it's pretty calibrated. You got to level the bed, which we can talk about. But there wasn't much to do. So here's, you know, there's the top part and the base. And it basically just one, two, three, four bolts on each side. All it takes is three connections right here. Goes in and then you're done and pretty much ready to print. Now this one does come packed with some really nice features that I liked, like this filament sensor. So if you're on a long print or something and the filament runs through out of the spool and then exits this sensor, it'll actually pause the print and you can put more filament in and then it'll resume the print from where it left off so you don't have to just bail on what you were doing. That's a good thing if you wanted to change colors too. Yeah, if you want to change colors, you can do that. Uh, here's the thing that I love about this printer. This Ultra Base. Yeah. And everybody that I've seen that's talked about it is pure magic. So when I first got into it, I have, I've only really talked to Matt about them before. And he was telling me you need to you know, get a glue stick and, and you know, some stuff. And people use uh, – they put masking tape uh, on their bed. They use hairspray oh, to spray man. down. <laughs> and they're trying to get the, the bottom layer of the part that you're printing to stick to the bed. You don't want it moving and sliding off and it just ruins your print. You want it to stick and stay stuck. And that's part of where the heated bed comes into play. Certain materials want to so have let, heat let's, on the bed. Let's stop there for a minute. So like I heat my bed. So here's the concept. You hit print and then you come back and now whatever you're making is stuck to your nozzle and it's being drug all over the place and you have to stop yep. and pull it off. So the reason the bed heats, I was explaining to my son, I have a metal bed with a piece of glass on top. And then uh, I'll jump over here. I went to Sally's uh, hair salon and I purchased my hairspray. And so I do a, a coat or two of hairspray on there. And uh, I heat my bed to around 60 degrees. What do you guys do? Well, I'm using ABS. I heat mine to 80 Celsius. Yeah, 80 to 100 for ABS. I do about 50 for PLA. And you don't really need a heated bed for PLA. Right. It, it can help, but you can do it at no heat, and it will should stick just fine. Well, while we're talking about – give us the name of this thing again, this base. This is the Ultra Base. Can you click on that? Yeah. So what it is, it's uh, actually, it's glass. Okay. But it's it's covered in this, like, weave glass. of stuff. I don't even really know what it is. Maybe it's etched glass. But here's here's where it comes into play. So I don't need any hairspray. I don't need to tape this down. I don't. I can print right on this surface. It sticks great. You can heat it up, um, do whatever you need to do. But here's the best part. Sometimes when, it, when you use stuff and, and you get a really good adhesion to the bed and the part sticks, you're having to take like hobby knives and blades and scrapers and things and, and trying to, you know, work and pry this part off your bed, right? It can be a hassle. It can be damaging to the bed. It can be and damaging to, your to your part. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and I've heard, I've seen stories of people, you know, sliding off the print and then sticking the scraper in their hand and cutting themselves and doing all this stuff. So here's the great part. After my print, if you let the bed cool down on this, Oh, it pops right off. It's magic. It doesn't even pop. It's like it's just resting on it. It's not even remotely well, stuck does to it. Thing. When it when it cools, I hear this pop, and that's it releasing from the bed, and then it's yeah. sitting on top, and I love it. Okay, okay. Yep. Can I buy this and use this? Uh, you might be able to buy. I don't. You know. So this is a smaller print area than yours. I don't know if they sell bigger ones for their other machines, but it. It's kind of specific to the Anycubic uh, printers. And then 
you, you could certainly put a, this bed on any of your other printers as long as it fits and is the right, you know, whatever. you got to size it correctly. But I love this print bed. It's it's just been amazing for me, and I don't have to deal with hairspray. I don't have to deal with glue sticks and clean up, and it's just it's just perfect. I just wipe it down with uh, isoprolic alcohol. Uh, wipe, I got these little alcohol wipes that I use. I just wipe down the bed uh, every now and then and continue on with my day. It's just really wipe convenient, bed. really nice. Um, what else? So the, I mean, yeah. So among that. Those are some of the killer features. This can do ABS. It can do some of the uh, the exotic materials because it, it can heat up the bed enough and the nozzle temperature can get high let's, enough. Let's talk about nozzle temperature. PLA, what do you guys usually run for a nozzle temp? So it's going to depend on your material. They usually have specified um, the same PLA uh, from different vendors can have different temperatures that they like. And there's a lot of factors. I'm still learning. Matt probably knows more than me, but... I usually run about 190 to 195, and what yeah. you'll find is if you run higher, like some of them can go to 210, 220, um, you'll get these stringy uh, leftovers between your parts, and then you have to worry about retraction settings and speed and, and distance and all these. There's all these parameters that work together along with temperature and all these other parameters. It's, it's just like one big uh, puzzle that you need to get everything set kind of just right i'm making it sound harder than it is right but there's a lot of factors that can vastly affect the print quality of what you're putting out mm -hmm. yep i use um i print a lot in abs I, I i've done pla but i enjoy abs more and i print right at 228 to 230 degrees celsius for abs well, I'm running 200, mm -hmm. but I am like on the bottom of this thing. I am getting a little stringy. So yeah. So Nicola I, suggested uh, printing a temp tower, a temp test print. So they've got these uh, G code file or these uh, STL files you can grab, and probably even G code depending on your printer. Um, but what it'll do is it'll print a tower, like a square tower, in layers, and then at a certain level, it'll have like a number kind of built into it. Um, it'll do a certain amount at a certain temperature and then it'll change the temperature automatically, print the next section at that temperature, print the next section at a different temperature. So nice. you can look at a print and then figure out what temperature works the best for that particular material. So if I'm doing it right, we're at Thingverse now. There you go. Well, and, that's an overhang, but similar. And the reason I'm taking you to Thingverse is because it's not as complicated as we're making it sound. After about three prints, I was blowing and going and printing like crazy. So there are things on uh, that you could go to that are, they test your printer to see if it's printing right. And these are some of the things you can print to make sure everything's working properly. But let's go straight to the fun part of Thingverse. So I looked up, whoop, I just knocked a, I looked up a Stratosurfer. Yep. And I thought, this is the thing I want to do. I want to see. Okay. Strato Surfer. I don't know that plane. That's is that a Struer. new one? Jason, you know I never misspell things. So if you look <laughs> up the airplane you're into, you can see a canopy, an extended motor mount, a mount for your GoPro, another motor mount, a tower. And so I go into this guy. Now, uh, I wrote a story for Model, Air, or Model Aviation, AMA. And uh, this is the thing I showed you a minute ago. This is the thing I knocked a hole in, or designed a hole. Did you in. knock the hole in it uh, electronically no. or mechanically after the print? I, I did it after, and I'll find that website. And we'll go take a look at how that works because it's so awesome. So basically, you say, "Okay, this is cool. I like this," and so that's what I printed. And uh, then you download it. And I'm not on my PC, but when I download it, I open it in a program called Cura. Yep. And then when you like it in Cura, you just uh, click save. It goes to my SD card. I plug that SD card into my printer. I, I scroll up to it and hit print. And awesome. that's it. There you yep. are. Now you could pull that STL file from Thingiverse into something like Tinkercad, which would yep. allow you to modify the part. So you could, you could manually add those holes in places um, and then e export that to the STL file again 
and then pull that into Cura and then put it in the G code and stick it in your printer. So you can Tinkercad will allow you to modify, create, make, do just about anything your imagination can so, can handle. Yeah, do a screen share for me. I'll show you guys um, if you don't mind here. Let's see. So we, I actually that is what I used to put that hole in there. All right, can you guys see? Oh, so you did do it electronically. I got yeah, you. Yeah, I did on Tinkercad. So you guys got me? Yes, sir. Yeah. This is Tinkercad, and it's basically a online program. I guess it's a cloud program. You don't down download it to your computer. You just run it straight from the web. So you log into Tinkercad, and then uh, you start designing, create new design, or use something. They always name it funny. Here's the funky here in Magello. Yeah, I love their names. Uh, yeah, so they name it like that. This is something I made um, real quickly to solve a problem on an RC car that uses, um, I used a, a Futaba receiver with two antenna and I did not know what I wanted to do so I made this quick little guy here and it has two little holes there, two little things to put antenna um, tubes out of and then you run the, ante the, you'd run the actual antennas in there, it goes straight through the bottom and comes out the top. Now this is three separate pieces that I had grouped together. If you see right here, um, this is a uh, what's called a hole. So you make a, a shape and you create a hole out of it, and then you move it into position, and it'll subtract from that thing. So if I were to make a box right here, and I wanted to make a hole in the box, I would create another box like so, and then change it to a hole and then combine these two together into one solid piece and then there you go it subtracted that from the thing so you can do all sorts of additions and subtractions let's say i wanted to take this cylinder put it right there make that cylinder a hole and then put it all together into one solid piece boom there you go took the other half of it out so you can make yep. really i've been using the uh, text feature yeah yeah so text and take things, text right? there. Hold on, Jason. I'm going to jump on so you, we can see you. Oh, so this off. is how you add the text. Oh, now you're on. Okay, I'll stop. Uh, okay. I, I want to. So my, so wife, my wife who uses oils, um, like essential oils, she's got this this little part here. It's like a, a thing to help get little rollerball things off. And then so it's just plain and purple. She was like, can you design me something? So I basically recreated my own version of it. Nice. And then I put I kind of put some, some uh, love big and live well text in there and then kind of made the part based on uh, just measuring the holes and the sizes and millimeters and then recreating that in Tinkercad how I wanted it. So it was a lot of fun. It's very useful. Did she think you were awesome? Oh, she always does. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> so here's that, here's that piece uh, on my RC car here that I made. If I take the top off, let's see if I can get this off pretty, pretty easily. Here it is right here. See where the antenna go in right there? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. So I got two two receivers coming out. goes right in there. Perfect solution for a problem that I had no idea how it was going to have these two antennas without sticking out the side. So um, works really well. And then real quick before we move on, this is something that I built here. A buddy of mine made this. It looks very strange, and it has nothing to do with RC. But this is in the shape of my cup holder in my Toyota Tacoma. So I use double-sided tape. I stick this in there. This faces me like, like so. Ah. And I take my cell phone, and I stick it right there. So now when I'm driving, my cell phone is looking directly at me about eh, down here. One, one of the best things, it, it may seem, seem a little bit weird looking, but when you actually use it in your vehicle, this is this right here is the best thing I've ever printed, bar none. I use it every single day, five times a day when I'm driving. Just put my phone in there. It won't come out. It fits nicely. The guy that designed them sells them, and he uh, sells them for like 20-something dollars, but I told him I had a printer, and he so he sold me the STL file for 10 bucks. 10 bucks nice. is very, very well worth it. Pretty cool. And then that's the thing is that uh, anything that you need – you can either design it or find it. So like these headphones, 
are always being knocked off. And so I created a headphone uh, holder over here. And uh, my daughter is asking me to make stuff. My son is asking me to make uh, switch holders and things like that. And so it's amazing. I just keep the printer on in the background. And Jason, I was saying, uh, I had plumbing issues and I was printing the whole time. And so I would be like on my back for an hour and I'd be like, I should go see how my print's going. <laughs> it was something to look forward to, to see if the print yeah. was done or if it was halfway done, you know? You know? <laughs> and here's and a, you can take it to so many levels too. Like I'm, I, I don't know if I'm actually going to do it. I might, but so I've got a Prusa, the Mark three coming. Uh, November, December, maybe. Um, but I'm going to start looking at doing like a Raspberry Pi mm. with Octoprint, and you can do these automated, like a uh, remote kind of start, stop monitoring, all this stuff. It's just, it, it's so crazy. It's just like the RC hobby. There's so many things you can do with it. And there's so many ways to screw it up, too. And here's a prime, <laughs> here's a prime example. Like you were talking about getting your, your retraction settings right how high the uh, the nozzle lifts when it goes from one to the other. Little things like that that make a huge difference if you're having problems. One area that I, I screwed up on just the uh, just today, actually, I told Jim I had to stop a five, six hour print halfway through because it screwed it up. If you'll, if you'll notice this cross hatching, yeah. that is actually inside of this. this that's called the, uh, the infill. Yeah. So you can do your infill solid which makes no sense because it will end up being a very heavy piece of equipment it'll be excuse me it'll be very heavy and it's a waste of uh of plastic so you make it sort of a honeycomb infill this is obviously for people that have not done this anybody that prints knows this but you can see the cross hatching in there well i decided this is about 25 to 30 percent infill i dropped it down to 10 percent infill when i built this this is the base of a rc car stand it's after the dirt tracks one. So basically there'll be a, a thing here and a swivel up here so I can put the RC car on and change the, um, change it around. So the, here's the problem, flip it over and look, this is what 10% infill looks like. Oh, so wow. You can see how wide now versus this, if you'll see how, how tight the cross hatching is versus how wide that is. And then now when it was going to cover the top of this, could. It didn't have anything to hold on to, and it started falling through. So if you mm -hmm. look, if you listen, oh, yeah. you can hear it's hear it cracking. Yeah, like this is trash. I could literally look at this. Like this is junk. Actually, it's pretty dang durable. But look at that <laughs> broken right there. Yeah, and then there's the whole like support where it's touching the build plate or everywhere. There's it's mind boggling how crazy. Uh, complicated it can be, but then yeah. how simple it is to actually well, do. So let's talk about simple. I'll show you uh, some. These are some of my mistakes. As you can see uh, they went crazy and got drug all over the place. And almost every issue I have, I can track back to the bed not being level. That was a huge problem for me. Yep. Leveling the bed at the center was always fine. It's when you start getting out into that far off distance on the outsides of the plate and it gets magnified. So I ended up shimming my bed with pieces of cardboard, as silly as it sounds, shimming it on one side and it's been right for over a year and a half now. So I thought I would level the bed and then get you guys to give me a critique. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to power it up, power it on. I'm going to go to uh, home with my menu over here. You're going to level there. the bed right now. Yeah, auto home. I got to say, I'm a little jealous of his print size, his print area. I don't have that kind of space. Uh, you guys haven't uh, seen that, have you? No. Well, yeah, I have, actually. Yours is awesome, too. Uh, it's but, so huge, I have to keep it in the corner of the room. This is about to move. This is taking up my whole office. But um, this was super easy to build. It was just a bunch of screws and things to plug into, making sure you got it in the right places. One thing I'll say to anybody buying any machine, check every bolt check every wheel they ship them loose sometimes for safety and you don't want wheels that aren't rolling on the track firmly you don't want to over tighten it but you and so i found all my wheels were not tight enough and i made sure my uh pulleys were all tight and the other cool part is that if you get this and you fall in love you can go to thingverse and find every modification for it on thingverse put it on your sd card 
print it on your bed. Yep. And the, it would be like if your truck made parts for your truck. Yeah. That, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what, like, mine requires you to, the first print is actually the fan holder for the darn thing. Ah, well, <laughs> That's actually on an SD card in there, ready yeah. to go, a fan holder. But uh, so now it's gone home, and now I'm going to turn the steppers off, which means that I can move it around without breaking anything. Yeah. Jim, have you printed a capo yet? Uh, you know what? It's a disable steppers. Okay. So I printed I, a chip bag, like a chip clip. Does that count? I think it would have yeah, the yeah, same sure. thing. <laughs> I have that mandolin on the wall over here, and a, K, a normal capo won't work because the neck is so small I can't get my fingers up. Yeah. So I'm going to try to create my own mandolin capo that will let me use it. Uh, so I take a piece of paper. I want, which is, I want you to print the ukulele. There's a printable ukulele yeah. you can make. I hate ukuleles. <laughs> <laughs> you see his face? I have you like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for the uh, comment there, fella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> now we're going to bed leveling. In case you're going straight to this in the video, um, it, you want to level it to the, the width of a piece of paper. And here's what I do, guys. I usually get it a little bit off the edge. I move my nozzle here, and then I pull under, and that is not level. So here's my question: What exactly? I know I want it to. I want to feel the nozzle, and I want it to still be able to move. But how tight do you get it? You want to drag it with it barely 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 leaving a drag mark on a piece of paper you don't want it tight then you're saying it shouldn't be tight enough to where you push the paper uh that it would stop and bunch up the paper it needs Correct. to be able to slide through but it's not completely freely but not enough to where it like sticks and punches up when you, you push build the first yeah on a clean nozzle obviously yeah. these nozzles are brass on a clean right. nozzle when you slide it across it should leave a little bit of a actually brass drag mark without bunching up you'll see it right there that's what it should look like that looks really good okay so i'm going to take my headphones off because i've got a so there's a knob under here one thing i'll say if you're a newbie um i was tightening and tightening wasn't the right direction to get it closer to the nozzle i had to turn left i believe so mm -hmm. i'm going to do that here and then you, you can see me i'm going to do all four corners then we're going to talk about the middle one second so my yeah mine does um so i've got this under here yeah so many different my paper is moving too freely i believe i'm going to get under there's a little wheel under here and i'm turning to the left that's not working i'm going to turn it to the right there we go just a half turn to the right and i'm getting just a little bit of friction i'm going to move this yeah. over to the other corner and that's obviously too tight so I'm loosening it up, and that feels about right. Then I'll move it, the bed, to the next corner, and there's a wheel under this side. That's too tight. And for, for any beginners out there that haven't done this before, what we're, what you've okay, that feels tried good. to accomplish with this is to set the adjustment layer for the, the basically the first layer of material if it's if the bed is too low from the print head, it's just going to spit out material, and nothing's going to stick to anything. Yeah. And if it's too high, it's just going to run through the the stuff as it crosses and create all kinds of problems. You're trying to get a nice squished first layer, um, and that's just going to it's kind of like the foundation of your house. You need a good first layer base. Yeah, and once I get that done, man, I do not touch that printer for the life of me. I well, just, I've left. Know, untouched now for years <laughs> here's my question so all four corners are leveled but the center is not that's so that, that's called uh warp it you have a warp so you yeah. you uh make your software understand that there's a warp in the center so when do I do that? To the center the nozzle the hot end will actually go up to take into account the warp of the of the glass and you can potentially fix it because a lot of times the warps come from the rods, the connection rods underneath. Mm -hmm. um, they might be bent. They might be uh, bound with friction that's causing them to bow or flex. Bow flex. Um, bow flex. <laughs> nice. So Retro. there's there's ways you can you could potentially it might even be just the bed frame itself is bent. And not perfectly flat level. Um, so there's. I've yeah. also heard of people that go out and buy uh, tiles or mirror pieces. Glass, that fit. yeah, custom let glass. Me, 
let me guys. Can I? Um, I want to take over real quick. I want to show you guys something here. Right? I'm gonna. I'm gonna find a bed. Another. Now check this out. This is my review. Let me know when I'm live, please, fellas. You're live now. All right. So this is my review from one year ago, almost to the week of See Me CNC's uh, Iris desktop 3D printer. This is a PLA non-heated bed only. Uh, as you see, it comes built and it comes with this test print done to show you that it works. But the problem is, is that during shipping, thing these arms get all screwed up. Everything gets moved around in sub-millimeter uh, fashion, and that's all it takes to mess stuff up. So in this review right here, um, I will, three, two, one, I want to show you real quick how this uh, prints it goes through its cycle here and um, let's see if I can find it all right here we go watch this this is gonna this is an auto leveling function so if you're watching right now you'll see look what it's doing it's testing what Jim just did but it's testing it on its own so it's it's an auto it it's finding out what the height of the bed is and then in the software it's making a 3D it's making a mental image of exactly what the bed looks like. Wow. So see it's doing the middle now it's testing it. It goes over to the edge, it tests it and then it's and then it builds its own picture of it. So no matter even if the bed is out of level, it's going to print it and take that into account and make it level. So it will move very small amounts when it's actually printing to take that in, in, into account. And then when you uh, actually print here, let's see if I got a, I think I have a, uh, here we are. So yeah, that's, that's the, obviously the initial print happening. And then I've got it, check this out. So there's the, there's the, the test cube that we were talking about and there's it actually printing it, uh, obviously in extremely fast motion. It's like a hand. I know. There you go. So there's uh that's a, a good look at an auto leveling bed versus doing it manually by that's hand. a pretty awesome machine you've got there. That is a nice little guy. I like this guy, but I don't like printing in PLA as much. So I decided uh -huh. to retire it and I use my use my big boy uh Rostock V2 Max for ABS only. Well, I'm going to move to the next phase here. I'm going to click on me, assuming that that makes me show up. Sure. So I moved everything around. This is your power supply and the brain. And there's an L, There's a screen here. And so I'm going to click it once. I'm going to scroll down to change SD card. I suggest if you have a CR10, you do that just to uh, make sure you're looking at the newest files. I'm going to go print from CD, and I have CR10 band duct mod. I'm going to click that. So as soon as I click it, this thing wants to print it. So now what it's doing is it's, uh, this file has a, a temperature nozzle a, or a temp for the nozzle, temp for the bed. I'm going to go in and manually make my own changes. So I'll go into tune and I'll go look at the bed, which they have at 50 and I'm going to turn up to 60. And then I'm going to look at the nozzle. It always says zero. I can't imagine it really is, but I put it on 200 anyway. Do you guys not use matter control? I use what it came with at this point. Is it a, you use a program or are you using, are you just using the software built into the display there? Yeah, it's just the built-in software. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, I use a, a separate program with as a, as a slicer and a dicer, if you will. So you have to cook, cook your computer up to it yeah. the whole time, right? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. I use matter I control this thing was living in my big shop but then i moved it in here for the podcast so then it's been in here all week but it's too it's crowding me and i have another workshop over here that i've turned into a place to leave things so i <laughs> i think that this bench that is in my iframe is going to be where this lives now let's talk about printing at night because i gotta admit oh, you're, i'm sitting in a room full of treasures uh guitars swords uh, holsters, you know, so fire is not something it's real. It's real. I mean, it could happen, I guess, you know, but you guys print at night. I printed the other night. Well, they tell you never to leave it alone. And I'll admit I have left this. I have left my printer many times alone. I've 
pulled it. I've slept all night before with it running. I've had my wife from upstairs go, what is that noise? And it's like going, you can hear it through the floor. Right. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> what it's doing. It's like, <laughs> so uh, it all depends on what those stepper motors are doing. But um, I've left the house before with it printing, which is a huge no-no. Uh, don't do it. It's not as bad as lipos, though, so I don't really care. But. I thought Jason was just weird. Uh, but it turns out it's standard procedure to put a live camera on your print. So I actually do. You can't really see it. It's in the background. The cameras I, that uh, watches my, I have a pool camera. It's about to be wintertime. So I pulled that, plugged it in here, and I can watch this on my phone. So like if we're in the living room, I can glance down and make sure nothing crazy is happening. Yeah, I'm watching right now from the room just behind me. <laughs> Uh, let's let's uh, present Jason to everybody and see that. Look at you! It looks like a that is one heck of a little setup. You even got everything lit up in there. I'm yeah, so that's the uh, that's the any uh, that's the uh, Monoprice Select Mini V2, and then there's the i3 Mega we were just showing. It's it's sitting idle right now. Oh man, that you even have a movable. Uh, it's a pan tilt yeah. zoom. Pan tilt zoom. Uh, oh my all gosh. Wow. Thank you. So my uh, my Prusa Prusa is going to go over here beside the i3 Mega when I get it in, but it's fun, fun to watch. Yes, yeah, so we can zoom in if we want to. I could oh just. Oh my gosh! What are you putting can... there? Another. Wow, uh... that's awesome. Oh, see, you got the bed moving one. That's cool. Yeah. So that's that. That's a two hundred and twenty dollar printer, and it does really, really great. But it's got a like a hundred and twenty millimeter print bread so it's not printing very big you know i don't find stuff. myself printing massive things anymore i usually print little doohickeys and doodads and things like that yeah i don't know i'm, I'm printing one of these which is a uh, destiny ghost uh part i ended up people some of my friends want these things for christmas and birthdays and things so i'm making it into this which has the oh that's, that's a lot of pieces led light thing it's all magnetic so they come off and Oh my gosh, you were really putting a lot of effort into this thing. Yeah. Have you made a fun fidget stuff. spinner yet? I have, yeah. Yeah. This one, you mean this fidget spinner right here? That's, good looking, hate... that's a good looking fidget. You should make that into a <laughs> ukulele. <laughs> oh, you... nice, Jim. That's kind of fun. <laughs> and then it's you not... got the, my favorite. So we're doing uh, Operation Christmas Child. Uh, so we're putting together a couple of shoe boxes. Uh, and so I've made like some of these little elephants with these little movable heads and feet and stuff. They call them elephants. I'm just kidding. Elephant. Well, my, sorry, my friends joke. joke with their kids and call them elephants. Nice. So anyway, so these things are cool and cute and simple, and so I'm going to add them into the shoe boxes for the kids. Oh, can I show you something else? This is like, I mean, things when, when things start getting serious when you're printing, you come up with ideas. So this is the VAS Banshee. And you guys know this plane pretty darn well. It's just a, uh, you know, go fast, turn any direction you want airframe. But look at that. I made a NACA duct. Oh, right nice. Here. See? And I just cut, cut it out and shoved it in there. And it actually cools the VTX, which is buried inside of here. And here's the exit hole. So there's a VTX down in there. It's all about the exit hole, folks. Yeah, it's all about that exit hole. So that's where the air comes out. And you can barely see the VTX straight buried inside of this fuselage with a NACA duct there. That is an actually really good working setup. And uh, this was one of the first things that I printed when I started printing. It's just uh, easy to make these ducts. You can shove them on anything, like any of your uh, model airplanes, stuff like that. They work wonders. So Jim, what other what other questions do you have being a, a kind of newbie low time 3D printer? Is there anything that you're are, are wondering or needing to know? Um, I want to show something while I had it in my hand. This is was supposed to be like a 26 hour build, and I stopped it. But let me say, look at the precision there. I, I mean, something like that. This is actually uh, not flat on the bottom. It's a diamond on the bottom, and those holes. We go, it was a paintbrush holder. So, and look at the bottom on that glass. Smooth, baby. So you guys yep. are kicking it, man. There's, there's, there's so many different printers and so many different things that happen. The resolution is huge. As you can see on mine here, the resolution is uh, when you get it in the, in the glare, you can see a lot of the, the lines 
I mean, yeah, the bottom on this one's pretty glassy, just like yours. It always is on the. But here's the top, and if you, oh no, this is printed facing down as well. So here's here's what the inside. That's the top. What it actually printed like. So, so I've noticed that many printers are very very smooth. They have very fine resolution. You can change the resolution. Um, but some of them look glassy and real, and a lot of them have, uh, you know, the the print lines in them and stuff like that. You, both of you guys' prints look exceptional, you know, really good quality, and I'm amazed that you can get that out of a sub five hundred dollar printer. Yeah. Well, they're saying this is a Creality C10 behind me. It's working now. Yeah. And, and um, they're saying this is the best printer for the money and the size that's on the market. And so, I guess my job is to find the problems and. And mostly it was me figuring out how it worked. I do have a question, though, Jason, to answer you. Um, here's my canopy again. I was very impressed. There's a few little things in here that aren't perfect, but nothing major. But on the inside, on the inside, I don't know if you can see it or not. This little mounting bracket is not smooth at all. It's all wiry. You know why? Because you didn't put a... Um a uh, support you didn't check support underneath it so it would build a support structure mm -hmm. to allow it to, so it doesn't get wiry yeah because it did print like yeah anything that's off the ground if you're building something yeah. and it starts to dome like that towards the top of the inside of that dome will get stringy because there's nothing that it's holding on to until it builds up that's well, all your and uh, so what it'll do Jim is is it's crazy when you first see it it adds all this material underneath right and it looks like you just added all this crap to your print, but it's like barely attached somehow. It's wafer thin. And it, yeah, it just, you just grab off. it and rip it out, and then you got a clean part left over. I mean, it's I've really got a cool. That wafer stuff right here. Oh. You know, there was another part to this that I did not print. And maybe that's what that was for. Ah, I bet it was. I had a piece of that wafer stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, I threw it away. Look at the wafers. I threw away the wafers. I guess that's it. I mean, for me, the biggest thing was making sure the bed was level. And I found that when using hairspray, you need to level it probably every other time because the hairspray is a different thickness each time. At some point, I'm going to have to clean the glass, I guess. You should uh, clean it after every print if you're doing hairspray. Seriously. I use uh, Disappearing Purple. The um, Jeez. glue the stick. stick. Yeah. It's really easy because all you do is you wet a, wet a paper towel and rub it over it and it comes off instantly and then you're ready for your next one so you do like a cross hatch you go like this all the way across the bed yeah wait, wait five minutes for it to dry mm -hmm. then go like this across it so you've laid down your your disappearing purple it uh dries and then you're ready to print i will say that i have had a lot of luck with hairspray i had very little luck with tape tape was what was killing me and i thought that i had a bad printer and what i'll say this too i'm going to put this in the article my son immediately was like print this of course and I, and I did and i don't know where he got that file i don't know i didn't even know what file it wanted it, this thing is printing stl files and so i i said truman we're breaking the rc rule of review <laughs> don't don't go, don't ninja nothing that don't need to be ninja. That's a pro bro rule. Sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. my, my rule is uh, d you stay with what you got. You don't go out of the parameters or the boundaries. And so on the card was a print. And I said, we're going to print that thing. I should go get it because it's so stupid. And uh, it printed it perfectly. What was it? Was I'll it be, the cat or? I'll be back. It's a baby. I want to see it. The baby. I had a cat and an owl. Yeah that came on my like two printers one was a cat one was an owl man i printed all sorts of toys for my son i printed a car i printed a uh excavator that prints like a, a digger if you will and it's an actual excavator that prints an all-in-one piece but the arms where they where they bend have just little pieces you have to snap them and then it's fully articulating once you break it so it's pretty cool man um I, I must admit, I go through I go through phases with my printer. So, you know, I didn't use it for a long time, and then all of a sudden, bam! I needed it, and uh, I started printing all the things, if you will. You know, yeah. All right, what you got, Jimmy? All right, this thing has a name. It's like Booba, the the fantabulous flabber. Oh, I saw you printing that, and I was wondering. I was oh, like, weird. Is that just a blob? <laughs> 
I thought your printer malfunctioned, but that's actually a character. Well, let me <laughs> see if I can shade it. Yeah, yeah it's all blown screen. out. Print that. Anyway, your screen lights blowing it out of here. Yeah, yeah. It has little hair and a little face. I think it has wings, but uh, here's the thing: you get a printer, you don't know anything, and then you print this. And then you're amazed and astounded. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, like, look, everybody, look. I made this. Yeah, it's what so, you feel like, isn't it? Jim, well, let's try this, man. Oh, you, this had, look, this had a, what you were talking about. This is called a raft. Raft. Yep. The raft yep. is solely designed to keep it from peeling uh -huh. up. It makes a, uh, or excuse me, from uh, warping for uh, ABS. So PLA doesn't really need a raft, but ABS does sometimes. It keeps it from, uh, shrinking and and pulling up so pretty cool to make that raft looks like I'm what i wanted to say jim <laughs> yes sir Go get ahead, this jim. right here this is called uh disappearing purple and this stuff is the best stuff i think out there for putting on your um thing you just do it down and then let it dry and you're done it comes right off if you're not uh if we're not all you know having the great bed that jason has and you have to put something down I wouldn't even mess with the hairspray, man. Just use this washable glue stick. This stuff is gold. Yeah, or purple. You know, the build, if you have build textures, yep. you don't need anything. That's, I, I just love just not having to worry about that. I'm getting oh, that all of a sudden. Get that printer, Jason, can you guys reach out to uh, who got this one from? <laughs> Who'd you get this one from? Banggood or uh, Gear, uh, Gear, Gear, Gear Best? Maybe they'll give me one. No, I need a, I'm ready to move on to a new printer because it, mine is just too big. Is anyone watching the live uh, questions? Anyone have any questions in the live feed? Uh, no questions. Sounds like uh, most people on there are 3D printer gurus. Oh. Well, this is just so you see it. I don't have the review at all. I felt like I should really know what I'm talking about before I do the review. And I'm getting, I'm close enough. I, I'm successfully printing repeatedly. So this is the bed I got. It shipped with uh, the uh, power supply brain separate. Uh, this rail was separate. This rail was separate. And really all I had to do was put some bolts in, which I actually took pictures of. There were some tricky parts. Yeah. I also took pictures of everything I tightened up on this bed and, and uh, how I tightened up the tracks and all that stuff. And which one does Jason have? Hold on before we go there. Let's see if there's any more here. Yeah. So. Well, look at that. Wow. Maybe that's what I looked at when it was, they were trying different stuff. So let's hit play and then you'll get a close up of what it looks like. Yikes. Nothing like a loud screaming intro graphic. Boom, give us. Okay, so that's fast speed. <laughs> when it was making the canopy, it was going back and forth uh, around it and it was going to. <laughs> For like an hour and i was like this i like this song a lot oh it gets old though man so what this thing buys you is that a it's a great unit but b and let's go back here it's super tall so you can make a vase or an arm we call it a vase <laughs> so this is what i have and this is what i'm enjoying and it was so it went together so easy oh my this fidget spinner get it out of here oh man everybody loves yes. it <laughs> and so we're coming up to the top of the hour. Uh, I'm pretty impressed that our viewers stayed with us through the whole thing. I wasn't sure how many people would uh, react to a 3D printing show, but the goal here is to tell you why you need it, where you could go to simply download things, where you could go to uh, build and change things. You can make your own, of course. And so like right now, I have some things on my desk. I have this headphone holder but I, I always am losing my glasses or dropping them because of cables and then cables. So my next thing is for my desk, I'm going to create a holder for SD cards, mm -hmm. my glasses, and some way to control the cables. I'm going to make one flat piece that sits right here. So the ability to do that is amazing to me. It really is. It's You're limited only by what your abilities hey, are. So a, Rob, Rob over in the chat says, fidget spinners paid for his 3D printer six times over. <laughs> He's been really? well, He sells fidgets. You might be changing your mind. Well, he sells fidget fidget spinners apparently. That I, that's that, awesome. That trend's got to be over. Ask him if he still selling them. Who knows? <laughs> He's I a guess friend I family before they were sold in dollar stores. Yeah. Wow. So I've 
I, I printed my own and then I bought one of these from Amazon for five bucks. And I was like, I just have to see the difference and it's weighted, but it spins for like seven minutes. The ones I print last for like two or three. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I can see the difference. Uh-huh. But you got good bearings in yours, right? Yeah, bearings all it all makes a difference. The weight I just don't I've just got bearings as the weights and they don't weigh that much, so it doesn't have a lot of mass mm-hmm. with the three print, even at hundred percent infill, there's just not a lot of mass there. Okay. Well, I've really uh to, to if I had to end, I would say I've really enjoyed it. I had no idea I would like it so much. I am a maker, so I I make leather and, and guitars and all kinds of stuff. And so with this thing, I can literally make parts for my guitars. I can make grips for 45 pistols. I was right. thinking about iPhone 7s and Yeah, 8s. I want to go to a maker fair in Nashville, the next one. I need to look hey, that up. I'm going to ask you, Jim. I'm going to ask you one time. Be honest with me. Where is that caddy grill that I made for you? I can put my hand on it if, you, if you're if uh, you testing I want to show. I want you to show it, man. That was the That is the best thing I have ever printed. Like, this is the most useful thing I've ever printed. But that Cadillac grill is the coolest thing that ever actually came off of my print bed. And I can't believe that uh, it didn't screw it up, you know? <laughs> but we'll see. Hopefully he'll find it here. Let's let's see if he can. So, Jason, what's your printer? Uh, I've got the Anycubic i3 Mega and the Monoprice Mini Select V2. And which one works best out of those two? Uh, they they both work about the same. Just one's bigger than the other. And then there I've got go. the Prusa i3 coming. So there's the uh, Cadillac grill keychain holder. You know what I should do is I should print this, but in black. Well, all you got to do is spray paint it, man. Yeah, yeah. Spray and paint it and then color the uh, grill and do all that stuff. Yeah. That that's a that was an easy print. It just did it and was done. It is pretty awesome. I mean, that is the front end of my Cadillac. Yeah. Uh, yeah man. I, I have a horn concept. These horns up here. Yeah. I'm going to mount them to a piece of wood, embed magnets with felt into the wood so that it's flush, big magnets, like Amazon magnets. And uh, then I'm going to make it so that I can put it on the front of the car and the magnets will hold it on while I drive, but I can pull it off and throw it the trunk when I go to the store. So nobody steals the horns. I've seen people steal stuff off the front of cars a lot. So yeah, I don't want them to steal my horns. That would so, stink. Yeah. So that that that's one of my maker concepts. I don't know how this will play into that, but it'd be cool if I could uh, laser print some cow horns. That'd be awesome, or maybe an antler. You know what? You got the depth to do it. You might as well give it a run. You yeah, can man. Print that. I mean, you probably want to do it in PLA because it it would get a little bit cool once it got up to the top if it was ABS. All right. So if you guys have questions, you know, shoot us some PMs or whatever. We're happy to answer them. Uh, we're at the end of the hour, totally at the end of the hour. What I have coming up right now, I have a video. I literally just uploaded to YouTube of the uh, Fat Shark Focal D- uh, DVRs. I took them to Nash Bro. I flew them with Jason. We flew them HDMI. Jason, and I did have that extra video that I thought I needed. I was like, hold on. Nice. And, and it's awesome. It's flawless there was only one little sparkle in the whole dang video and it, <laughs> it's me flying at nashboro so it's like upside down low inverted down a road sweet it's awesome so uh the dvr uh video and review should be done soon i did get word from fat shark that the 1.3 units left the factory finally and i got my antennas from true rc nice you got so, those things from ba I, I just hope that I don't get it all right as it turns 30. But if it does, I'll fly out of the car, I guess. 30 degrees? Yeah. Oh, you got a few weeks for that. I got my pants on now. You know, it must be cooler out there from wearing pants. Yeah, buddy, it's getting chilly out there. Actually, it's in the 70s here. So. Usually I do the podcast with no pants. Not today. Matt, <laughs> Matt hey, uh, by the way, you guys don't know this. You know, in the podcast uh, with that, I got my Halloween costume, by the way. Uh, I saw that. Yeah, I, we did the Halloween thing. And we the man who had too much to show costume. Oh yeah, you got that? No, I went and blurred it out. It blurred it out. So <laughs> normal people can't see that anymore, but uh, the audio is still there of Jason. This this is Jason. What? <laughs> Look at dang it, Jim T. The Maker Fair in Nashville was last weekend. Ah, that was 
the science museum, I'm sure. How so I, that? I do have the costume. It's too late to put it on. And next week we'll be gone. Right? Yeah. Uh-huh. We will. And then when's Halloween? Are we going to miss Halloween? Um, Halloween is what? The 31st? Which is it's, on uh, Tuesday. Okay. We're going to miss Halloween on the podcast. That's We're going to assume that? How? No. No, no, no. We have a podcast on the 26th before. Oh. Somehow, before the, iPhone, uh, before somehow the, the feed is stuck on me. It's been oh, on that's me. I thought that uh, I thought we were going to be out of town. Uh, I had it in my mind. I had the. I guess not. I got my dates wrong. Okay, good. Well, then I will wear my costume on the uh, Halloween show. Jason and Matt, are you going to wear your costume? I don't have a costume. Uh, I was going to be Abraham from the Walk. I, I am making. Well, I don't know if this really qualifies as RC. My friends that we always go over to their house for Halloween are doing like a Harry Potter theme. So I actually printed them like a bunch of Harry Potter wands for all their kids and stuff. But uh, I decided to make, I've got a little uh, half torso skeleton. Mm -hmm. And so I bought a, uh, what are those things called in Harry Potter? The the little things that fly around and Quidditch? I don't remember. No, no, no. It's the, the scary things that come eat you. Oh, oh. Dementor. Dementor, yeah. So I bought a little child's Dementor costume on Amazon. Scary. Put it on my half torso skeleton attached it to my Segway Mini Pro yes, and was driving it around with my phone app, the RC style. Oh, nice. I'm sorry. How, how is there not a story or video up on RC? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's RC. pretty right? awesome. Wrapping this thing around. So apparently hanging a scary thing from a quadcopter, that's last year. Everyone's done with that. Yeah. Hey, the I have thing is putting it on a Segway and putting it on the ground, which is even more frightening. You know, as a maker, I just had an idea, Jason, for your wands. Uh, what if you could make a, uh, in, uh, a chamber inside the wands as it printed, and then you went to Amazon and got some horse hair, and then you could put the horse's tail hair in the wand, like yeah. drop it and let it print around it, and then yeah, you could. Then you'd have a real. We could make that happen. Yeah, you could like tout it as a. Yeah, give it the core. Yeah, if you don't right. believe it, break it open and see. <laughs> All right. I think we've gone far enough with our insanity. I like it. I think we have. Well, everybody, I want to thank Jason Cole for joining us this week. Thank Jason. Yes, sir. We'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm. I want to thank Matt Cole and the super badass hat. Thanks, Matt. Matt, Matt Cole. Cole. Matt yeah. Cole. Matt Duff. Matt King well, Cole. Matt you like Cole. my you like my tactical hat? Yeah, that's very awesome. Five one one. And then I'd like to thank myself, and then I'll zoom in so you can see my hat. This was uh, not for sale. This was a one off. Check it out. You love to move that. You think that camera's over there, don't you? <laughs> I do. It's a pro bro hat that looks like a dead pro hat. brotherhood. All right, y'all. Simmer down now and have a great week. And we'll talk to you next. Well, we won't talk to you next week. So we'll think about you next week. We might. We'll we do a live do thing from somewhere. Maybe we'll be out in a bar in Canada. And yeah, we're going to Canada next week. The whole Canada. team. Canada. It's a beer drinking contest. So we're pretty sure we're going to win. Uh, I don't know, man. This. Those Canadians can put down their Molson. Fancy. Fancy. <laughs> all right, y'all. It's the RC Groups podcast. RCgroups.com. Peace out. Print the world's largest the and most active RC website. Yeah. RCgroups.com. Partner site. Heli Freak. Brandeis.com. Profile Brother. Shut her down. Simmer down now. So be sure to simmer down at all times. The bird is in the kitchen. I've, I've been watching Battlestar Galactica. You know, the people that stay in the bathtubs hooked up and all they do is jibber jabber about, uh, do y'all watch Battlestar Galactica? No, I, I have, to, I hate to say it, but I don't watch Battlestar Galactica. The third card's dropped when the fifth card walks out the door. The door is askew. All <laughs> systems go jump, jump, jump. <laughs>